Well, hello there. Welcome. So happy to have you here today listening to this here video. This is uh, pretty big, pretty big what we've got here. This is the first of many science ed puzzle videos. So here is how this is going to work. You got your headphones and you're going to watch a video where I play the audio recording of unit one, lesson one in your science books. You're also going to answer questions as this audio recording plays. Make sure you're paying attention to this video as it's going along. You can rewind the video at any point. However, you probably don't want to do that for every single question. You probably don't want to do that um, often at all, really, you know, so pay attention. Remember, we are doing this instead of reading chapter one, lesson one in the science book. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, now prepare yourselves for the HMH audio recording of unit one, lesson one in your science books. If you would like to follow along with the video in your science book, which is something that I always recommend that you do. You need to turn to page three in your book, the blue science book. The reading runs from pages three to 13, at least the one that we're going to play today. Alrighty, now I'm gonna turn this over to the HMH readers. We appreciate them a little bit. Lesson one, essential question. What is science? Engage your brain. Find one answer to the following question in this lesson and write it here. What are some science skills you could use when studying fish in an aquarium? Active reading. Lesson vocabulary. List the terms. As you learn about each one, make notes in the interactive glossary. Use headings. Active readers preview headings and use them to pose questions that set purposes for reading. Reading with a purpose helps active readers focus on understanding what they read in order to fulfill the purpose. What all scientists do. Digging up fossils, peering through telescopes, mixing chemicals in a lab, using computers to make weather predictions. These are only a few of the things scientists do. Active reading. As you read these two pages, turn the heading into a question in your mind and underline sentences that answer the question. Does solving puzzles and searching for buried treasures sound like fun? If so, you might like being a paleontologist. Paleontologists are scientists who study the history of life on Earth. Like all scientists, they try to explain how and why things in the natural world happen. They answer questions by doing investigations. An investigation is a procedure carried out to carefully observe, study, or test something in order to learn more about it. In addition to knowing a lot about living things of the past, paleontologists have to use many skills. In fact, all scientists use these skills. All scientists observe or use their five senses to collect information, and all scientists compare finding ways objects and events are similar and different. Observe, write one observation you could make about the fossil. This paleontologist needs to observe the landscape to predict where fossils might be hidden. Once he finds the fossils, he compares them to fossils found in other parts of the world. Paleontology is just one branch of science. Science is the study of the natural world and involves making observations and performing investigations. Scientists learn by thinking critically about the results of their investigations. Paleontologists use fossils to answer questions such as, what was Earth's environment like in the past? Paleontologists also work in labs cleaning and studying fossils. Compare. Observe these two skulls. List two ways they are similar and two ways they are different. Similarities. Differences. 
prove it. In the 1600s, there were not many ways to keep meat fresh. Rotting meat quickly filled with squirming worm-like maggots. Yuck. Where did the maggots come from? Active reading. On these two pages, circle the examples of evidence. Draw a large X through the explanation that was shown not to be true. Rotten meat turns into maggots. Travel back in time to the 1660s. Most people think flies, worms, and mice come from non-living objects and rotting food. As evidence or proof, they show how a dead animal's body soon becomes loaded with squirming maggots. To a scientist, evidence is information collected during a scientific investigation. Some evidence, such as seeing a fossil dinosaur skull, is direct evidence that the dinosaur existed. Evidence can be indirect, such as finding a fossil footprint of a dinosaur. Meet Dr. Francesco Reddy, a scientist in Italy. A book Dr. Reddy reads leads him to think maggots come from the eggs of flies. Reddy plans and conducts investigations to gather evidence. He traps some maggots inside jars with pieces of meat. He watches the maggots turn into adult flies. He observes adult flies laying eggs, and more maggots come out of these eggs. Reddy then sets up an experiment. He places meat in several jars. Some jars are sealed, and others are left open to the air. Reddy observes that only the meat in jars he left open have maggots. Reddy experiments many times over. He tries dead fish, frogs, and snakes. All the evidence supports his claim. Living insects can only come from other living insects. Reddy placed fresh meat in two jars. He covered one jar and left the other jar uncovered. The meat in the open jar soon became wormy, while the meat in the sealed jar did not. Fill in the blanks in this sequence graphic organizer. Make observations and ask. Plan and conduct. Use. To make claims. A sticky trap. Humans are too big to get stuck in a spider's web. But there are some sticky traps you need to avoid when thinking like a scientist. Active reading. As you read these two pages, turn the main heading into a question in your mind. Then underline sentences that answer the question. How to draw conclusions. Scientists draw conclusions from the results of their investigations. Any conclusion must be backed up with evidence. Other scientists judge the conclusion based on how much evidence is given. They also judge how well the evidence supports the conclusion. Don't jump to conclusions too quickly. That's a sticky trap in science. As Dr. Reddy did, repeat your investigations. Think about what you can infer from your observations, and then, only then, draw your conclusions. Suppose you spend a week observing spiders. You might conclude that all spiders build webs to catch their food. This may be true of the spiders you observed, but it's not true of all spiders. Some spiders, such as wolf spiders, hunt for their prey instead. Look at the words in the spider web below. Star the things you should use to draw conclusions properly. Cross out the others. Opinions, favorites, observations, inferences, evidence, feelings. Observation, information collected by using the senses. The insect is stuck in the spider web. Inference, an idea or a conclusion based on an observation. A spider is going to use the bug for food later. Opinion, a personal belief that does not need proof. Spiders are really gross. Opinion or evidence. An opinion is a belief or judgment. It doesn't have to be proved or backed up with evidence. It might be your opinion that spiders are gross and disgusting. Others may disagree, but you are welcome to stick with your opinion. Personal feelings and opinions should not affect how you do investigations, nor should they affect your conclusions. It's hard to do, but science is about keeping an open mind. For example, don't ignore evidence just because you don't like what it means. Write one observation, 
one inference and one opinion about what you see in the photo. Observation, inference, opinion. Why it matters. Knowledge grows. How is a man investigating electricity and wires more than 350 years ago connected to the latest video game release? Stephen Gray, a scientist born in 1666, was working at home when he discovered that electrical energy could move along a short metal wire. Gray carried his materials to friends' homes. He showed them how the materials worked, and, together, they made the wire longer and longer. Today, there are so many ways for scientists to communicate or share the results of investigation. When scientists communicate clearly, others can repeat their investigations. They can compare their results with those of others. They can expand on one another's ideas. In these ways, scientific knowledge grows. Communicate. List several ways you can communicate. Knowledge grows when it is communicated. Each science discovery leads to new questions. More is learned, and new things are invented. The first video game was invented in 1958. The inventor was a scientist named William Higginbotham. The reason? To make Visitor's Day at his lab more interesting for the public. Hundreds of people lined up to play the game. Take a look at the timeline. The science behind Higginbotham's game goes back hundreds of years or more. 1729. Stephen Gray shows that electrical energy can be carried through a wire. 1882. Thomas Edison opens the first electricity generating station. 1947. The transistor needed to make radios and computers is invented. 1953. The first computer is sold. 1958. William Higginbotham invents the first video game. 1967. First handheld calculator invented. 1971. First coin-operated arcade video games in use. The first arcade games were not very complex. 1972. The first home video game systems are sold. 1977. The first handheld video games are sold. 2015. Video games are quickly moving from systems to cloud-based apps. The video games of today are fast, complex, and interactive. Meet scientists. There are more people working as scientists today than ever before in history. Yet, there are plenty of unanswered questions left for you to answer. Active reading. As you read these two pages, Underline what each type of scientist studies. Astronomer. Astronomers ask questions about how the universe works because novas, black holes, and galaxies are so far away. They use time-space relationships to investigate them. For example, astronomers measure space distances in units called light years. That's how far light can travel in one Earth year. Do the math. Use fractions. Earth and Mars travel around the sun. Each time Earth makes one complete trip, Mars makes about one half of its trip. One, how many trips does Earth make around the sun in the time it takes Mars to make one trip? Two, in the drawing below, put an X where Mars will be after Earth completes five trips around the sun. Mars, Earth. You don't have to be a pro to do astronomy. People have discovered many comets and exploding stars using telescopes in their backyards. Order. When you order, you place objects or events one after another in the correct sequence. Write the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 
to show the order of the images below. Botanist. Botanists investigate questions about plants. For example, some botanists study how environmental conditions affect a plant's life cycle. Taxonomist. Taxonomists are scientists who identify types of living things and classify them by how they are related. When you classify, you organize objects or events into categories based on specific characteristics. Classify. Look at the butterflies on this page. What are some ways you could classify them? Sum it up. Read the summary and fill in. We're having some technical difficulties here. Hi, I'm back. Hate when that happens. And I'm a little too lazy to change it at this point. Oh boy. Now I've done it. So you get to see how the magic works in your first ad puzzle of the year. Okay. I should be good now. So what we do at this point, get out of here. All right, good. We go back to the top. First of all, shout out HMH readers. Give them a round of applause. They carried us through that chapter. Thank you. Thank you, HMH. Okay, I'm back. Technical difficulties are over. So what we have now, you're going to have to answer the essential question and list some vocabulary terms from the chapter. Oh, look, there's one right here. Essential question. What is science? Next thing. What are some science skills you could use when studying fish in an aquarium? Lesson vocabulary. Just go ahead and list some of the vocabulary terms. The words that are highlighted in yellow, like investigation. List some of those words that you saw in the lesson. All right, there you have it. I wanna take this moment, I want you, excuse me, I want you to take this moment to congratulate yourself. You just completed the first science ed puzzle of the year. I'm applauding for you. I appreciate you. You hear that? This is me clapping for you because you did it. You did it. I truly appreciate your hard work. I'm really excited to see what you're going to accomplish in fifth grade this year. Let's make this year a great one. Mr. Roth is out.